The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord.
apostles to do the first Christian public survey. What is the public reaction survey? And there's a variety of answers. John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, and the prophets. All of which answers are wrong. This brings out that our faith is not based on public opinion polls. Otherwise, we'll see the same kind of fickleness that we have with our politicians whose fingers are constantly being made wet and put into the wind as they go from one opinion to another depending on their constituency. Instead, we are given this other question. And in one sense, if you think of it, he says, who do you say I am? And it's you plural. Who do we would say here in Texas, who do y'all say I am? <laughs> he said, no, that would <laughs> Because Greek has that deep plural. And the response is nothing. That's sort of a committee approach. That's not so good either. Again, there are too many of those going on in politics as well. It's rather that the Heavenly Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, inspires one, Simon. It's interesting to note, Simon was the most common name among Jewish men at the time of Christ. There are more examples of Simon. And the name means, in Hebrew and Aramaic, Shimon, the one who listens. That's the nature of the name and presumably the person. And you see him being transformed from the one who listens. He hears what the Father has revealed to him. And he speaks up. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This would be a kind of statement that would be far from the mentality of first century Jews ever to call any human being the Son of God. That's just outside of their whole mentality. It would not be what they have. And that's why Christ responds to him with a personal beatitude. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Now he's been with Peter for a while. So he also knows that Peter's not always having the, all the cylinders firing at once. You know, he gets into lots of difficulty and will get more difficult. So he's well aware of Peter's limitations and that this is from the Father. And that's why he changes his name from Shimon, the one who listens, to Kepha. Now, just keep in mind here, too, something that we all, almost all of us can take a raise of hands to see if it's happened to you. But it's really common that people will say, well, Jesus said, you are Petros. And then says, upon this rock, Petra, I will build my church. So Peter the rock is a little rock from someplace in Arkansas or something. And it's his faith that is the big rock. That's the Petra. Well, hey, that's not the distinction in the terms. When you look at Greek poetry, you see that Petra and Petros are used sometimes for big stones, small stones. It's interchangeable. That's not so defined. So that, that is a false argument. And secondly, our Lord Jesus wasn't speaking in Greek. And you know his name in Aramaic, the language our Lord was speaking, because you see it mentioned any number of times 
in the Gospels and the Epistles. It was called Kepa. Sometimes people say Cephas. No, no, no. Bo Cephas is the guy that sings songs. It's not Cephas, it's Kepa. Kepa. And this is an interesting name. Because in all the history of any Jewish writing, there is only one guy who's ever been found with the name Kepha. It was a Jewish man living on Elephantini Island, which is at the first cataract of the Nile River up by Aswan, modern-day Aswan. And in a marriage contract, there's this one guy named Kepha. Nobody else ever asked him. It was not a common name. So Peter goes from having the most common name, Simon, Shimon, in the whole country, to having this unique designation that nobody else has until after the church is founded. Then we see the name Petros, or Peter, become very popular among Christians. No one else. But it's not a name that was found in the Jews. And when Jesus said, you are uh, Peter and on this rock I'll build my church, listen how it sounds. And the Kepha, well, al Kepha, Ebena Kesheshe, so that you are Kepha, and on this Kepha, I will build my church. It doesn't mean a small rock. What is a Kepha? A Kepha, that's just like in Hebrew, okay? means a crag, a rock. That's the meaning of the word. You see it in the book of Job, in Hebrew, with the And what's very important, too, is when you go to Caesarea, or uh, Caesarea Philippi, you can see that right behind the city, there is a 90-foot high crag of rock, solid rock, granite. And the cliff goes on for a couple hundred feet. That's a couple hundred yards. So it's this enormous rock that Jesus is looking at when he says that you are rock. And this is something that our Lord says, that you are this rock that I will build my church upon. Now, of course, like we heard in the opening prayer, yes, we build it on the act of faith of Jesus and the other thing, the act of faith of Peter, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, we build upon that. And we have to keep that focus on the person of Christ. Absolutely. But we also see that Jesus makes it clear that you are rock and I will build my church on this rock. And that there is this amazing process through history that no matter what the evil one tries, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Another little side geographic. At the base of that cliff is one of the three springs from which the Jordan River flows. So that the snow melt from the mountain way above comes down to there and comes out of the spring. This spring used to be extraordinarily deep. There was an earthquake in the 8th century that sort of blocked up, but the water would come out, but you can't see it at the bottom. But in the time of Christ, it was so deep that the name of the spring was Sha'alei Sha'ol, the gates of hell. And the point that Christ is making is that just as this spring cannot take down this crag of rock that you see here, neither can the forces of death and evil and sin try to destroy the church. They can try, they will not succeed, they will not prevail against it. 
no matter how many of the first popes were martyred, the church did not cease. No matter how many times, ten times the Romans persecuted the church, they did not succeed. When Napoleon Bonaparte captured the pope and put him in prison, he said to the Pope, Now I have destroyed the Catholic Church. And the Pope Pius VI said, If we priests haven't been able to do it in 1800 years, you don't have a chance. <laughs> and later on, when Napoleon was a prisoner, it was the Pope that got mercy shown to him. The Nazis tried to destroy us, the Communists tried to destroy us, and this has not come to an end, nor will they stop trying. We have people in this country and elsewhere who would love to see the church neutered and, if possible, destroyed, because once they neuter us, they can destroy us. That is what they want. They don't have a chance any more than the Pope. But then we have to respond. We have to be those who accept the act of faith, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Accept that Christ has chosen Peter and his successors to be able to build the church and have it spread to the world. And that this church will not be knocked down by any satanic attacks. And that as we are faithful, even when others are not, when we remain committed, even when the world wants to destroy the church and get us away from it, and we stay with it, then we too will know that fullness of joy that Peter has as we celebrate this feast of Saint Peter, and he will welcome us into that same company of the saints.